Hello, 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 everybody. I'm just setting myself up. So don't mind me. Just give me a second while I get myself together. Just have to come in here and get my video up and get everything done. So do not mind me. I am here. Got my little mermaid ready. I can't see you guys yet, so just give me a second. I'm trying to load up the video on my YouTube so I can see you guys' comments and stuff. I should be able to pull that up right about now. Woohoo, success. And everything is charged. Everything is good to go. Let's see who's here. Come on, load up. Hi, Brandy. No problem. Sounds good. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna wait for everybody. Hey, Liz. There goes my phone. <laughs> Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. It's been a happy-go-lucky kind of day today. And we are going to do this. We are going to do this, Brutus. Oh, uh-oh. My finger, my jig fell. But hopefully that line there doesn't bother you guys too much. That's just my wire for my charger. So that I can make sure that um, my phone stays functionable while I'm doing this with you guys. <laughs> Hello, Sandra. Thanks for joining. Still got my handy dandy cardboard. And as you can see, she is completely dry. She is completely, completely, completely dry. And thank goodness, no cracks or anything like that in the clay. So very good, very good. And the tail is completely dry as well. And we are going to be painting her today. And we're also going to be gluing her down. But after we paint her, she fits in like so. And this fits in like so. So everything is in proportion. Everything is still good. It did shrink a little bit, but not too much. That is to be expected when you're working with clays, as many of you guys know. Hey, Debbie. So, what we're going to do is she needs some friends because, you know, obviously she's under the sea. So, she can't just be there, you know, lallygagging and hanging out by herself. She needs some people. Not some people. Well, you know what I mean. She needs some friends. So, this is the same dough from last week. And just to show you guys, it's still very soft. As long as you guys wrap it well, it will last. It will last as long as you wrap it. She's still very good. So as you guys can see, this is uh, very affordable and easy to do. Hey, Nix. So we're going to play with this and 
put these off to the side to dry. I have my other cardboard here. I'm going to put the mermaid off to the side because after I finish molding the next pieces that we're going to make, um, then we're going to go into painting her and, you know, creating some accessories. I'm thinking about making some kind of a little skirt here that I'm going to be adhering to her um, just to, you know, give her a little bit of style and glitz and stuff. So to me, Debbie. Thank you. It is, right? I like it. I like the hair the way it is too, Brandy, but she needs a little bit of color because I think that between all the other um, colors that's going to be in there, she might get a little lost. But I might paint the hair white. I mean, that's an option. I can paint her hair white. Hey, Michelle. So I'm going to go back into molding this, but before I start molding this, let me um, get my other cardboard. And let me just put her in a secure location, which is right on top of my keyboard, <laughs> right on my laptop. But I mean, she dried really well. And it's, it, it sounds like a very dense kind of plastic. And they're not, I mean, they got a little weight to it, but it's not too heavy. You know, the tail is super thin. So I'm thinking about making maybe some little crabs. Like, I have no idea. I'm going to be hand molding all of this stuff. So we'll see what happens. Hey, Crystal. How you doing, love? Awesome. I can't wait to see it. Hello, Joyce. How you doing? So we're going to see where this goes, you guys. But this, um, this clay is super fun. I ordered some molds, like some picture frame molds and some other little, like, um, you know, some foliage and just different kinds of molds that I want to try out to see how it all works together. But right now, all I'm doing is pretty much warming up this dough to get it ready for um, some fun. So I'm thinking octopus. I'm not sure. I'm still trying to figure out where exactly I want to place the mermaid because I, the whole her whole theme is that she's kind of trapped in this net, which is that net that I bought from the Dollar Tree. This netting right here. Let me just open this up. I haven't even opened this to see how like how the net even looks. Well, but I bought this netting. So my idea, and this netting might actually be a little wide, but I'll see what I do. Now that I'm looking at it, it's very wide. These holes are like, they're really trying to capture real mermaid. Not, not so much the one that I made. You can make a hammock out of this thing right here. <laughs> hey, Jenny. How'd you doing? Feeling better, love? I hope so. Really, Crystal? Oh, you know, I could definitely use that because I am making my own porcelain clay, girl. It's an air dry clay. Super easy to make. I got the video on my channel. And basically, um, I molded this mermaid on last week's live. We did her from scratch. And this is her tail right here. And you know how I get down. I just be all over the hair. <laughs> I be all over the hair because I'm reading Brandy's message. <laughs> so we're going to keep today's live stream about what we're doing here. Um, nothing to do with anything that's going on in the outside. I want us to keep it, you know, copacetic, having fun. What we do when we get together, that's what I want to keep it about. So for the most part, let's have some fun, let's joke and have some laughs as we usually do and keep the flow running smoothly. So this is the net, you guys. So I'm thinking that this net is like, uh-uh, it's a little wide. So I'm going to have to probably figure out some other kind of netting or I'm going to maybe have to tie some more knots into it. I might just tie some more knots into it to make the holes a little shorter, but... This is the netting that I'm going to use, and 
my whole idea for this is that there was a fisherman who kind of casted his net and trying to catch something else he caught my mermaid and so now I need some friends to help free her so what I'm thinking is that I could get make like little crabs to kind of um, cling onto the net and also I want to do like some tentacles um, kind of coming out from like somewhere in the background that are gonna grab onto the net itself as well to try to free her before she's you know trapped because you know the octopus and the crabs and all of those you know uh, sea life creatures are her friends and they do not want them to take her because she's like the queen of the sea hello so uh, for the most part that's pretty much what I'm trying to do so I'm gonna get some Vaseline in my hands because I think I done worked it a little too much I just need to stick just a little so I'm gonna lather up my surface and we gonna get the mold in yes right now I don't have any molds so everything that I'm making I'm making myself and I'm gonna be making some do-it-yourself kind of molds but I have to get the silicone the you know the gawk gun that you use for gawking in like bathtubs and stuff like that um, I have to get that as a 100% silicone and you mix that with cornstarch and you can make molds with it so I have to get it I just haven't been able to get to that to the store to go buy some Oops. sorry if it shakes but I have this wire kind of hanging I know you guys can see the little wire kind of hanging off the side so GS so I'm gonna get some Vaseline and we're gonna see what we do we're going to keep it live and funky. So I'm just greasing up my hands so that I don't get any of this um, porcelain clay stuck on me. And I'm just greasing up my surface a little bit on this cardboard. You can use cardboard, you can use um, glass, you know, whatever you have. Just, you know, add a little bit of butter to it. <laughs> Put some Vaseline on it so that it's nice and slick and doesn't stick. And I'm just going to grab about this much should be good to start making some little crabs with it and whenever you're not using your clay make sure that you guys wrap it back up because it's an air dry clay you guys so obviously if you leave it in air it is going to start getting hard and drying <laughs> I always you know that's my mindset right now so like if for me to kind of um, create the scene I have to somehow envision it and granted you know it'll change as I go about doing things because you know our imagination can get away with us <laughs> and we can we can see ourselves doing everything and then once we get to do it it's like eh, I don't know if I can really do this so I'm gonna start with pretty much trying to um, make some little crabs and this is what I love about this clay it's very simple very simple to make And I have to make her some little, some little legs. How many, how many legs does a crab have? Does anybody know? Hello, Janice. Does anybody know how many legs a crab has? I'm thinking six, three on each side, and then the two big ones. But I don't know. Now, when you guys are working with clay, remember not to make your pieces too thin, especially with this kind of clay because it's porcelain so it's almost like a glass without being a glass if you make it too thin it's it's um you'll ha it's a, it'll be easier for it to crack and break on you so you do want it to have you know um, be a little bit on the thicker end you want it to be at least a few millimeters um centimeters you know in height huh Oh, it's got 10? Oh, okay. Alrighty, I've just been informed that <clears throat> the crab has 10 legs. I never knew it had 10 legs. I guess I ate them so fast I never counted. <laughs> so, have any of you guys ever had crabs before? Now, I don't mean those kinds of crabs. I mean the seafood crabs, guys. Let's keep it PG. The seafood crabs. Me being from the Dominican Republic, you know, we eat crabs all the time. 
that's like nothing so I'm just kind of trying to roll these things out a little bit trying to keep it somewhat dimensional <clears throat> but again trying to keep some kind of thickness to them and I need something to cut with where is my where are my little tools here huh. I need something to kind of cut with so I'm gonna just use that and I'm gonna try to poke some holes in here I probably won't be able to get all 10 in here I mean you know this is six legs I think that's what I thought so I'm just gonna go with six I'm gonna do three on each side and I'm gonna try to do like the real big ones in the front so if she gets away with eight she's lucky So I'm just going to kind of pull this in here like so. And I made a little hole in there. So that I can kind of stick this in there. Somehow. And this is a work in progress you guys. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I might have to make her legs just a little bit thicker. I don't even think I'm going to need to um, make uh, little holes in it, but I did the holes anyway, just to see kind of like what it looks like, just to see, yeah, they just Googled it for me, they're like 10 legs, I was like, what, it has 10 legs, I didn't know that, that was a feast, boy, I didn't even know I was having a feast. <laughs> they yummy I love crabs and I love shrimp for some reason I'm not a fan of lobster I just to me lobster tastes kind of bland I don't know doesn't have much flavor I keep doing this over and over and over again is about right let me go ahead and add this little hole right here and the hole most likely isn't needed but I'm just adding it in anyways because at least it'll give it something to kind of grab onto and I know um, crabs have like the tiniest little feet but I'm gonna put her up like that for right now because I am going to be gluing her onto the net. Like she's, you know, she's trapped up there. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So let's see, let's see, let's see. We need four more. And my hands are still greasy. You guys can probably see how shiny it still is. It's still very greasy. See, they're more like that. They're kind of pointy in the bottom, the, the, the feet are. They're thicker towards the top, but they're just a little bit pointier towards the bottom. Uh, one of her arms fell off. Uh-oh. Somebody called the surgeon. And I'm just going to stick that other one in there. She's starting to look a lot more like a spider, but if you think about it, crabs are like spiders in a way. The way that they walk, the way that they kind of look, you know, except for all the hairy stuff. So, I'm going to be painting all of this anyway, so for right now, I'm kind of okay with how it's looking. Because I'll give her character as I move along. Let me put the other one. Little leg fell out. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And then we'll get into painting. Um, I'm probably going to make two crabs just to hang on to the net. And then I'm going to do the octopus. And then we're going to get into the painting of the mermaid and assembling her and how to put it together. But as you guys can see, as long as you leave them alone and you don't touch them, I was really bad with that at the beginning like I had to like kind of touch it and feel it all the time because it was so new to me um, but as long as you kind of leave it alone 
like it'll dry perfectly fine and it won't it won't bend on you um you just gotta leave them on the surface that they're drying at don't remove them until they're completely dry and they will dry um the way you need them to dry you know flat if you want to curve them if you want them to have shape then just put them on something that's curved and leave them to dry there and they will retain the shape of wherever you put it at so it will do that and we're gonna be adding some little glass beads for eyes but probably not now I'll probably do that in the other one I think this is gonna be a, like a three-part series I think after I do these pieces today the next time that I go on I'm gonna paint them and while they're drying I'll go assembling the canvas and then we should have some kind of a finished product hopefully by the next live stream hopefully Hello, crafty girl. So how's everybody doing today? Hopefully having an awesome day. It is 80 degrees in New York. I don't know how hot it is where you are, but it is hot, hot, hot over here. We are sweating shiz balls over here like crazy. I didn't even want to come on my house. My AC is already going. It is cold, cold, cold in these here New Yorks. Okay, and I'm going to add two more in the back. And these are probably very thick for what I need them actually. But I'm just going to put it in, and then if I got to cut them, I'll cut them. Let me get a bigger one. Got to get a bigger one here. And get this all done up again. So I kept my word, and I didn't paint it. I was so tempted. Oh my god, you guys, you don't understand. I was so tempted. I did paint a flower. Where is it? I painted this flower that I made. Um, this is the one that I showed you guys, you know, last, um, what was it, Saturday when I did the live stream. This is the one that I did then. And I painted it because I had to paint something and it came out really cute. This is all handmade, pretty much, you know, the little lines. I added all the texture to it, you know, let it dry. And then I painted it to the best of my abilities so we'll see what happens okay so I'm gonna insert this one and bend that one a little bit so that it looks like so that I can actually hook it to the net itself so I'm just bending all of these little legs Bending all of these little legs. Now there's a chance that I'm not really blending them too well that they might fall out, but it's okay if they if if you don't blend them to the body that you're trying to stick it onto and it dries and then you are and you're able to pretty much take it apart like I did with the mermaid. It's okay because as long as it dries to the end in that same position, it'll fit right into each other like puzzle pieces. You won't have an issue with that. You will not have an issue with that. I'm about to look at a picture of a crab just to make sure that she doesn't have any kind of texture on her, um, you know, on her on her back. But I think I could probably draw that in. Whoa, Liz, it's hot over there. It's hot in Louisiana too, and it's hot as heck in Florida, huh? I don't know what the heck is going on. This is going to be one hot summer, you guys. And you know what happens when it gets hot like this? It starts to rain like crazy. Which is no bueno either. It's either too hot or too wet. I thought we was in the Goldilocks zone. What happened with that? doesn't feel like Goldilocks. It's always one or the other. Um, let's see here. And I'm going to do one more hole for the back and I'm gonna let this this um, clay dry out just a little bit before I start making those front ones 
I'm gonna leave the clay out just a little bit outside so that it starts to kind of dry out but this is what I have so far and I will smooth it out just a, you know a little bit I'm not gonna go too crazy because they do have dents and ridges so I kind of want all those little dents and ridges in there not too much but I have my little creepy crawly friend over here and I think I'm gonna try to add two more here but I might just leave it like that and just give the impression of a give the impression of a, of a crab the one that I really want to put a lot of detail in is the um the tentacles I really want to add a lot of detail in that it's 90 degrees where you are wow hey Dana how'd you do love oh my I can't take it I'm a summer baby you guys I was born in July but let me tell you something the only thing I like about the summer is my birthday I love the fall because the temperature is like right there I wish it was the fall all year round only with us keep but other than that I could do without all this heat I really can I could do without all this heat it is crazy it gives me a headache because I have to squint all the time to look at anything and everything I'm squinting and I wear glasses so for the most part it is no fun wearing glasses in the sun unless they're shades So I got my little uh, my little circle going. I'm just gonna, you know, kind of oval it out a little bit, make it a little oval shape, not too round. And that's another thing I love about this clay. The good and the bad thing about this clay is the following: you can mold it very easily. Um, but the bad thing is you can also damage it very easily as well. You have to be very careful um, when playing with this clay because it's very fun to work with but at the same time it's very fragile I'm going to try to do these legs a different way because this is an evolution so for me I'm learning as I go as well I play with clay but I am no expert <laughs> that's why I call it play time <laughs> because that's really what I'm doing and as I go I'm kind of learning so I'm going to stick them from the bottom and see if that makes my life easier it looks like a chair unlike this one who actually looks like it's got it coming from the sides so yeah I'm gonna put it from the sides because I can't half ass it <laughs> Aww. whoa if it's hot over here it's hot as heck over there Dana that's like living inferno over there It's hot as camel humps in the middle of the desert. So I'm going to make these holes. I think it's my best way to go is making these holes. And I'm going to put one there. I'm going to put one there. And I'm going to put one there. And I'm going to try to make these things quick and stick it in because I really, really want to work on the tentacles. That's going to probably take me a little bit more time. But what I really, really want to do is my favorite thing of all time, which is painting. So that's really what I'm looking forward to. I want to paint. I want to paint. I've been wanting to paint that mermaid for like ever since it dried. Like I think, what is that? I did it on Saturday. I think by Sunday I was already like, are you dry it? Are you dry it? Are you dry it? But then I remember, like, dang it, I can't paint it till Wednesday. So, yeah. You guys caught me on that one. My husband literally had to tell me, like, can you leave that thing alone? It's going to end up falling on you. Just leave it alone. Let it go. Let it go. So, let's see here. I'm trying to catch a little bit of pace here and... Um, pull some of these little legs out 
Now, granted, it's not a you know an exact replica of what a crab would look like. Obviously, this crab has like cock diesel arms. She is like a wildebeest crab. Her arms are so dang big and thick. But it's okay. I am okay with it. Hello, Patricia. Welcome back. We're making some fox uh, crabs over here. And I was just saying, I'm not trying to make it too lifelike because I'm going to be painting them and there's going to be stuff hanging from everywhere anyways because I'm really trying to make, uh, this is going to be a real dimensional piece. Probably one of the most dimensional that I've made um, because the tail of the mermaid is going to be coming out so far out. Um, this is going to be interesting for me uh, to do. I've never done this before as far as molding my old stuff and putting it on a canvas. This is going to be a first time for me, so I'm really excited to see how that looks. Because I really want to try to make more things like that moving forward. Where I'm kind of molding things and just creating my own, you know, everything from like the clay. And incorporating it a little bit more into some of my mixed media projects. What I want to do next, actually, um, for those of you that saw my fairy jar, I want to make a fairy out of the clay. I want to make a baby fairy out of the clay, and I want to make it, I want to make the wings, and I want to make everything from scratch. So I gotta see. I know I did. I did um put a baby mold into my thing, but I want to see if I can make her without the mold, just to see how it looks, to see if I can do it. I like um challenging myself like that sometimes. So just trying new things here. Come on, man! I cannot give you no posturopedic leg if you are not willing to take it. You need to be easy. And take what mama's giving you. There we go. So I think two ought to do it. Because, you know, it is what it is. And hopefully as it dries, I'll be able to kind of, um, you know, get them a little bit stiffer. If the crabs don't work out for me, I'll just scrap that whole idea of making crabs and no, I'm fishes. I'll make fishes, you guys. I love fairies too. I love anything with wings. I want to make a Pegasus. But I know that that will be hard. In my mind, it seems so easy. I'm like, I'll just mold it this way and I'll do this way and I'll build this body and I'll build those legs. And I'm like, yeah, I could do it. Reality is, it's not as easy as I imagine it. I'm sure of it. Claws. Claws where, Brandy? The crab? Hopefully at least one ones work for me. I'm not so worried if I can't salvage them both. Because I know that one's a little bit flimsy. I left the clay out just a little bit for this one so the clay is a little bit easier to manage. That one, the clay is kind of soft, so... He is fighting for the mermaid so he can lose some legs. You said lose or fools? Um, what do you mean, Joyce? Add some legs in here. Let's see. 
So I think that about covers it. She's not the best looking crab in the world, but she'll do. She'll do. Just pinching her down a little bit right here because I know that this little area is kind of smaller for them. And then they have the big old eyes um, right in this section here. So I'm just going to put that in there. And I'm going to leave her be like this. And hopefully, um, because I have the AC going in my room, the, air, the clay will dry up a little bit quicker. And see, she's losing legs. I can't. I can't deal. <laughs> Lose some legs. So the guy can, oh my God, this is like a horror film. <laughs> I wanted to also kind of make a boat. Like that was another thing that I was thinking about. I was like, I should make a boat on the... Like, you know, just uh, the small part of the boat, like the hull of the boat. Um, and put it like so it's above the water and then the net is coming from the side of the boat into the to the water scene, into the ocean scene. So that it gives it a little bit more life. These crab legs, you guys. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Why did I want crabs? Let's see. All right. I might have to pinch those into place, but let's give these babies some eyes for right now. And let's pinch her little mouth here. And let's leave this just as it is. And they look like crabs that just came out of the water. And I'm just gonna stick these legs up like so. And let's get working on something else. Like the tentacles so I'm gonna make it so like they're coming up this way the mermaid is somewhere up there there's a boat somewhere up there I, I'm still debating on the boat aspect of it but there's a boat somewhere and I'm gonna need way more clay than that I want to kind of use up most of this batch if not all of it at least most of it I do want to use up in making um, you know as many things out of clay as I can possibly make another thing that I'm gonna add to this um, whole scene I want to do um, I want to do like a little acrylic painting like there's a piece of work of art or something in the bottom of the ocean you know how all kinds of things get lost maybe it's from the Titanic who knows Hey, Lady J, I didn't even see you in there, girl. How you doing? So, let's see here. So, I'm going to put it. Can you guys see me well? Let's see. I moved the camera just a smidge. Hopefully, you guys, let me see if I can get a better. I had to turn my um disconnect my charger because it's so hot that my phone is actually telling me like unplug me you're burning my battery out so I had to unplug it so if you guys start getting glitches or anything like that let me know because then I know that I have to plug it back in but hopefully it'll allow the battery to kind of cool down a little bit it's just very very hot I have to work on either replacing this phone because this phone is only used for um for this it's only used for um, me videoing. I don't do it. I don't use nothing else with it. But I keep it plugged in most of the time, which I think is what's messing me up. I keep it plugged in all the time. So let's see. We got to make some tentacles. And I just love playing with this thing. <laughs> it's so soft. Like, it's just so smooth. It's just so smooth. And stretching it out kind of going off some kind of an angle there and the same way that I mold it is the same way that it stays on this cardboard just kind of rounding this little piece out right here 
and as we know um, tentacles have little suction cups which I'll have to kind of create somehow right now I'm just trying to get a little bit of I guess the shape and the thickness overall of how I want this to kind of look make an anchor I can do that as well I have I think I have enough clay to kind of make this and then also make a couple of accessories uh, to this whole piece So let's see here. Like how many tentacles you guys think would be good? I gotta clip my nails. I keep bumping into it with my nails. And there's no better tool than your hands, you guys, when it comes to working some of these pieces. There literally is no better tool than your hands for smoothing out this kind of clay. Hey Myra, hello Melissa. You guys are already calling numbers. I haven't even given it away yet. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> if I do a giveaway on this, it'll be when it's done. Not yet. And that's if. Because I do have to make another one. So... I have to make another one for a very special lady to be revealed at a later time and date. That one I probably won't show you guys, which I think is the reason why I'm allowing you to see what I'm doing now. So that you kind of understand the, the, the process of how it all gets done. <laughs> I love it. You guys are playing the game. <laughs> I'm not even giving it away right now. You're getting ahead of me. I haven't done a game in a while. Well, a giveaway, I should say. I haven't done a giveaway for the live in a while. I've been trying to get the... I kind of messed up with um, today because today's supposed to be all about paper crafting and here I am playing with clay. <laughs> but um, I'll get back to that next Wednesday. I want to make some shaker cards with uh, my prize winnings from Brandy. I haven't even touched them. I just keep looking at them and just like, oh my God, I got to use you. Oh, I asked how many. Hello. You see what happens? <laughs> you get caught up in conversation. <laughs> like six. Um, well, I am molding. I made a mermaid. And I'm going to be creating a canvas uh, with this mermaid. So right now I'm making her some rescue buddies. I'm trying to make an octopus right now. Not a whole octopus. Just kind of like these arms reaching to kind of save her. Because she's going to be caught up in a net. And we're going to try to get her out of that net. So we need friends to get her out of that net. So I'm kind of working this clay, which is a porcelain clay, to kind of um, get this mermaid free. So, uh, this one kind of got thin on me. <laughs> the tentacles. <laughs> I'm like, look at them, they're playing the game, isn't that cute? I completely forgot I asked how many tentacles to make. So... Somebody said three, between three and eight, <laughs> somewhere between three and eight. So I'm going to see, I'm going to try to make a really long one. Um, I'm going to try to make a really long one that I can kind of uh, mold into position here. But again, I don't want it to be too, uh, I don't want it to be too thick nor too thin. So I still have to add the details of the little tentacles, you know, the little suction cups. 
on the tentacles so this one's gonna be the one that's gonna be kind of reaching I'm gonna say this one's kind of reaching so let's see here let's see if we can stretch these out stretch these out Now, what I don't know what I'm going to do as far as um, if I'm going to paint on the little suction cups or if I am going to um, you know, hand make them with like little with like little rivets or something. So I'm not quite sure which way I'm going as far as that, but we shall see because this this mermaid can add this mermaid this octopus can either come from a corner or I can bring it off from the side but either way I do have to kind of somehow stick them together just so that it looks like one big piece and I'm just kind of twisting up you know how the mermaid the, I keep saying mermaids the tentacles kind of be spinning all over the place longer tentacles hard to pull it longer than that brandy because it gets too thin but I'll try I'll try because as I'm working this clay this clay is literally drying that's the thing with this clay it'll stay you know you can manage it you can handle it but it's an air dry clay so every second that it's out in the air it's a second that it's starting to dry so I'm trying to do this in a way that it's not too uh, too crazy I'm gonna kind of stand that one up like that let me smooth out some of these little markings that I got here just kind of smooth these all together now, if you don't blend these clays, these clays, when they dry, they will separate from each other. And you'll notice that they're drying because you actually see the separation between the pieces. So you'll know that everything is everything. Everything is everything. Let's see. Let's grab some more clay. Because we have this much clay to work with, you guys. I didn't make fresh. I have to buy more glue. And I don't want to keep investing in the small bottles since I plan on making, you know, batches of this at a time. I want to buy the bigger one. Yes. A real octopus has eight, but since um, this octopus is kind of creeping in and kind of grabbing on, we don't need all eight of them to be grabbing on to, to give the illusion or the impression that there's an octopus there. So I don't think I'm going to do the eight. I'll probably do four. So I'm probably going to do one more and see how that works out and see if I like how that looks because I'm still trying to figure out how to arrange them in a way that it makes sense like this one I want to be able to kind of wrap it out a little bit more so I'm thinking to give it that actually twisted up kind of look you know how, how octopuses get that they all start raveling themselves up in all different kinds of directions when they're trying to find the way out or they're trying to free their friends <laughs> in this case oh it is I love playing with this stuff I love playing with this stuff hello hello nail art queen thanks for joining thank you so I'm trying to see I'm 
working this clay here. I'm trying to figure out uh, how many more I can add because the canvas size per se, I have to figure out how big the canvas is going to be. Because I have to make the canvas. I have to, it's, a, it's gonna be a handmade canvas because of how big the components are. I have to make my own so that I can fit everything inside more or less. And if I end up giving it away in the giveaway, um, in the you know in the next live stream that I do when I have it all finished, then I need to also be able to fit it in a box so I can ship it out to whoever ends up winning it. So let's see. See, I just think that's a bit much. Or well, maybe if it kind of overlaps. So let's see. Let's see how that kind of goes. Just trying to see where exactly where do I want this tentacle that came out of nowhere <laughs> to kind of fit in hi Lisa so I'm just trying to figure out where exactly do I want this long tentacle maybe I can have it kind of twisting out like that well that would be interesting they all look kind of different in a way we can't have them all too different and flatten these out together so that it all forms one piece and when it dries it dries as one cohesive piece so I'm going to kind of blend these in and turn them to one clay just by rubbing them in together and blending the clays together And I'm going to try to add some texture to this and see how it looks with the texture. See how this all looks together. So let's see, let's see. This one's really thick. So this one actually I could probably stretch it out. make it a little longer see their arms never go all the way straight out they're always bending in one way or the other they have all these weird kind of angles and I don't really like how that one's looking and they have all these weird kind of angles and I made this one so long let's see Should I add one more? Should I add another one like this, like on the side here? I don't know if that's going to be a bit much because the way that it's going to come, I think that that might be good to go. And at the end of the day, I will have to kind of make it so that it's actually grabbing on which is kind of like why I curled them down a little bit so that I can make it look like it's grabbing onto the um, the netting. And I need some kind of pencil or something so that I can make some markings. I gotta get a pen. I gotta get a pen. Well, let's see. I'm wondering if I should make one more.
I got to get a pen that I can pull. This will do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this pen cap off and just leave that little hole that's there. I think that that'll help me to make these markings. Ooh, maybe this side. Let me see it. That might not work. Yeah, I'm probably going to wait for it to dry so that I can paint them on because they're going to be going in all different directions and I don't think it's going to hold, it's not going to hold the shape. It's not going to hold the mold all the way through. So, so add one more. And then we'll make the anchor and then we'll start painting and gluing it together and we'll see. So an anchor, let me look at the picture of an anchor real quick so that I can just make sure that I do this right. An anchor. Come on, Google. I said anchor, not banker. It's not that hard. images let's see all right so that should be easy enough for me to do I looked at my reference picture so pretty much it's just a curved T let's see how fancy I get yes the painting I can't wait to paint this thing I cannot wait to paint this thing. How big of an anchor should it be? I don't think I should make it too big. Right? Make this as even as possible. Look at my picture real quick. Hello, Ruth. Thank you for joining. So we have this piece here. Then I'm going to separate this piece. Right here. And add another piece there. To make the anchor and I'm just flattening off the sides a little bit trying to get it as leveled as possible the same width all the way around which is not always the easiest thing because our fingers are all different shapes and sizes so we got that in there and I'm just pressing up on the sides here. Let me see. My phone is always going off when I'm live. They know I'm on TV. That's why. <laughs> so let's see. So now I got to make a U shape to go on the bottom of this anchor. And I'm running out of room on this cardboard. <laughs> but let's see what we come up with. I've never made an anchor before, so this will be interesting. This will be interesting. Let's see how long do I need this to be. That should be about fine. That should be about fine. And I want to flatten these curves out. 
gonna flatten these little pieces out and I am going to let's see what I'm gonna do cut this piece off cut that piece off Push all of these in. Well, let's see what happens. So, so far, I'm just making these little points here because I'm, I have to add um, from the picture that I saw, they have like little arrows coming out at the end. So I'm trying to make an arrow. I'm trying to make an arrow. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It'll be better if I had like a little triangle shape cutter. So let's see. complete DIY hack over here <laughs> keep singing oh my god girl please I'm like my mind is like okay right now I'm on relaxed mode and I'm gonna just keep myself in game. but singing girl that's not my I'm more of an impromptu kind of person okay let's see Come on, triangle. Build for me, triangle. I need more. I'm gonna pinch here, flatten here, pinch here, flatten here, pinch here, flatten here, pinch here, flatten here. And then smooth it out. And then smooth it out. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, Maya. I really hope so. Because if it don't come out good, then I can't give it away. Why does everything have to be so complicated? It should be easy and fun to do. Okay. And I'm just going to smooth that out as much as I possibly can. This thing got a hump right here. Come on. Just got a little piece right here. You would think that it would just be as easy as forming a triangle with your hands, which is what I should have done instead of complicating my existence. Hello, Carmen. Get it together, girl. Get it together, girl. It does not have to be so tough. It does not have to be so tough. So pretty much learning from my mistakes and building on this one a little bit more because it's a little bit flat. And smoothing it all out so it becomes one piece of clay as opposed to pieces of clay and let me just push this out just a smidge what do I need what do I need that I don't have let's see what I can do with this to get myself some of them tools because you just don't know what you need till you need it you know I 
Okay. I did not just go through all of that so that you could get this combobulated on me. So, hopefully, this little anchor is way too big. So, let's stretch you out. Because you are way too big. You would think something as simple as an anchor would not be hard to do, but there you go. I guess it can still be hard. It can still be hard to do. So my little anchor is about done. Let me just look at this picture real quick one more times again. I gotta make a circle. Oh Lord. I gotta make a circle for the anchor. I'm just kind of flattening it out. I gotta look at this from a different angle. Hmm? <laughs> it's just so hot. I'm the kind of person I could craft in the dark. I like the low light sometimes. All right, so just trying to blend this out just a little bit with where I sat it on so that it doesn't come off on me. I mean, if it does, it's okay because I'll just paint over it anyway. But let's see. This little arrow over here is like not working with me. It's not giving me the shape I want. Get in there. Alrighty, make it as pointy as the other one. Pointy as the other one, and this anchor is about to sink, sink or swim. I don't know, but it's gonna go like that. I tell you that right now. It's gonna go like that. Mm-hmm. I gotta work this clay because it's getting dry. Just the outer, just the outer skin is getting a little dry. Look at how discombobulated that thing looks. I can see it on my monitor. That thing, this thing looks crazy as heck. I can't. It's driving me crazy. Well, thank you. Well, you know how, guys, how I do. I do the giveaway. I, you know, I do giveaways every now and then on my live stream of the things that I make. And usually when I do, we play a little game where I, I write down a certain number, depending on how many items it is. I write down a certain number, and then I'll have you guys guess what the number is. And whoever says the number right is the one that takes it home. That way it's fair. I'm going to try this anchor thing again. Because I didn't like the angle where I was sitting, well, where I'm sitting at, the angle was just not allowing me to see how ridiculous it looked. So, I'm going to do this again. And that's the thing, that's the good thing about this clay. You can pretty much work it and work it too. You can't work it no more. 
It's supposed to sink. <laughs> yes. But anchors don't bend when they do sink. And this one was wonky. This one was wonky. So I want to get this thing in here somehow. And still be able to maybe add another leg to that. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But I'm just trying to find the, the easiest... Point here where this kind of looks. What I drop? I drop the bottle. This kind of looks. Okay. Yeah, I'm there. Okay. So this time I'm gonna flatten those babies out and I'm just gonna cut right around it. All because I want to get this little peak here because this peak is not even necessary but all because I want to get this little peak I'm going through all this madness right now and this one looks a lot better though than the other one did overall it looks a lot better than the other one did you at Tuesday morning, Brandy. What? I am so jelly right now. I don't even have a Tuesday morning. The closest one to me is like 45 miles. Probably further than that. It's like in another state altogether. So let's see here. And I'm just kind of smoothing that in with my finger. Actually. And I think this anchor came out a lot better than the first one. So it's going to go like that. Cause at least it's a little bit better. It's not so wonky in the shape. And I'm gonna put the little circle here because it's got a little circle up in the top. Right. So I'm just gonna do this, do this. And where's my tool? And do this. There we go. That's as good as it's gonna get. You say this to me now, Joyce, after I've spent the last 15 minutes figuring out little points. That would have been a perfect excuse 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and you are right. Only a part of it will stick out because when it, once it hooks to the ground, it's going to hook 
you know, on one side. It's not going to hook all the, on both sides. Así se fue. That's right, Liz. Anda pal sirete. No more. So, I have this one here. Let me try to see if I can figure out. My poor crabs, they're like, they don't die. Like, they just, like, I don't know. They look sorry as heck. I'm going to try to make some fishes because I might not use these. Well, I might use them, but not, not the way I wanted to use them. I might actually use them, use them and kind of hide them at the same time because they're looking a little weird. <laughs> they're looking a little weird. I like the faces, but let's see what happens once they dry. So expect a little update on the little crabs <laughs> somewhere down the line. It's okay, Joyce. I forgive you. So I'm going to try to add one more tentacle to this. Let's see what happens, you guys. I'm thinking I'm going to probably add one more curl down here. Um, get out of this. And I think that's it. Then we're going to start painting. <laughs> Just let it dry and send it to you. You like the anchor brandy? Brandy's like the seafaring expert over here. So if she likes it, then I'm happy. Then I know I did okay. <laughs> this might be too big. Oh, I lost the leg again. Oh, I lost another leg. I gotta stop touching this stuff. You see what I'm telling you guys about leaving stuff alone? I'm just not going to touch them no more. Poor little crab. Can't hold the leg to save his life. This little leg is broken. I got to make another one. Uh, what we going to do? What we going to do? I'll make that soon enough. Put the crabs under the rock. Now I gotta make a rock? <laughs> Thank Mida. I just, you know, I gotta make the other leg. This one kinda cracked. I don't know what happened. It kinda cracked it on me. Oh no. It cracked on me. So let's see. I don't want to make this too super long. But. See, I'm thinking I got to get up under those. I got to get up under those things. So. I don't want to make this one curled and then this one over here not curled. So, what am I going to do? Put it on this side. What are you gonna do? Become unsuccessful? <laughs> you guys ever seen that movie? What is it? Um, the uh, American Gangster, I think it is. One of the Italian guys, um, Charles Denzel. He's like, what are you gonna do? Become unsuccessful <laughs> and be happy. You could be rich and you could have enemies. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had a moment. <laughs> the things that fly through my mind <laughs> with no blockage. This is what, what happens when your mind is free. Anything can just crawl in there. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's thank you. See, it's already drying, so it's not going to really stick much. I'm not too worried about it sticking. Like I said, I'll leave it molded to the side. It'll still catch the shape, so when I go, you know, glue it on, It'll still all blend well. And most likely I'm going to be having to add something to these tentacles one way or the other. I might use it this side up or I might use it the other side. It really all depends how it works with the theme and how it fits into the shape of the, of the canvas itself. And how everything is kind of going. So I'm just going to kind of curl this up just a little bit. And I really like the fact that it kind of crinkles up and it's got like these little crinkles in it. 
So I think with this one, just gonna smooth this out, kind of level it all off so it's all on the same kind of level, and I have to figure out what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna use that netting or if I'm gonna use something else, and I also have to kind of figure out what I'm gonna do as far as how I'm gonna place this octopus to help her. Am I gonna have him trapped in the net with her? Like he's kind of also being caught by his net or like what am I gonna do? So I have to figure out some things from here to the time that um, this will be ready to, you know, get glued on and everything will get put in. I just kind of work this little tentacle a little bit because it got real thin on me right about here so I'm just squeezing some more of that clay into it to make it thicker and then again try to figure out which way which way am I gonna have you kind of pointing I like him having hmm, Yeah, this is starting to dry, so I think I'm going to leave it be. Then I'll just decorate it and add whatever shadowing and so on and so forth. I need to as I go along. Um, this one's going to be the catcher one right here. And these guys are just trying to figure out what they're going to do with themselves. So I'm going to leave that like that. Because they're starting. the outer layers are starting to get hard. And it starts to dry, like I said, air dry clay starts to dry the minute that you start working with it. And although it gives you time. Bye, Deb. Thanks for stopping in. Um, you know, air dry clay starts drying up the minute you start working with it because it's air dry clay. Although you can work with it, you know, like you guys have seen me working with it since I opened it up, you know, since I started the live. So you can work with it and it will last you for a while. Again, the, the humidity, the temperature in your room is going to factor in a lot of how fast it's drying. Because it's hot outside and I actually have the AC going. So I'm like, I have a lot of <laughs> variations going on over here. Um, it's actually um, starting to dry a little bit quicker than it did the last time when I made the mermaid. Like the mermaid, I was able to sculpt it a lot and work with it a lot. Um, and I'm noticing right now that it is a little bit drying a little bit. So I know that this one's not going to take too much time to dry. Um, what I want to do, I want to do a fish, I want to do at least one or two fishes and go into painting. So, let me get some Vaseline for my fingers, only because I want to be able to sculpt this. And the Vaseline just helps you, um, kind of maneuver yourself around the clay a little bit better. I just want to be able to kind of give this fish some definitions, give her some cheekbone. I can't wait to see how this thing is going to look once it's all together. Like, um, my mind is just like all over the place, you guys. It is literally all over the place. Just thinking about what this is gonna look like. No problem, Brandy. Take your time. I'll be here for a little while. Okay, I'm gonna try to give her some kind of a tail. So I'm just gonna spread this out. I hope that you guys can see this one. I'm just gonna spread this out. And I'm just gonna kind of just add some texture with the tip of my nail 
Nothing too fancy. My board is needs Vaseline. Mm. Even my board is drying out. Even my board is drying out. My pieces are sticking to it. So I'm going to round it out again. Press it down. Just try to kind of add some texture to it. Put the, the tip of my thumbnail. Where is my... And the pizza done. So let's see. Let's give it some shape, some movement. Right? Just like fishes have. And And now while it's there, I'm just going to keep stretching this out as much as I can to kind of thin it out as much as I possibly can. Flatten out the bottom side because, you know, it's going to be laying kind of flat. Just giving that thin some movement like it's in the water, trying to anyways. She doesn't have to be the most perfect fish. You just have to love it. Oh boy. You know what? Take your three numbers and go over there with it. You know where you gotta go. Go back home. Right where you feel welcome. that buffoonery out of here. People so crazy. Like, really? What did you think? I was going to be like, oh yeah, sure. Come on, you guys. Let's go over there. Let's go have some fun. Let's go click. Click, click, click. I don't even know what fish I'm making. This is an imaginary fish. I just figured in a in a vast sea there's gotta be one of everything. So I'm just doing the best I can, what I got. Yes. I try to kick them out as soon as I notice that they, they come in here and they invade the territory with the buffoonery. They got all kind of wackadoos they got nothing better to do. Like if people wanted that, they know how to find you. Stop recruiting. They know how to find you. And you know what's crazy? I need to make this like this. Because this is gonna go flat. So I'm actually creating this in a way that is not even well this is fine. And the anchors and the other stuff is fine. But this fish is gonna be flat. I gotta lay him flat on the side. Because he's not gonna be on the bottom. I'm I don't think I'm gonna make a shadow box. I'm not sure yet, but I don't think I'm making a shadow box. I think I'm just going to make a regular canvas. <laughs> oh, you guys can see my glasses. And the top of my head a little bit. Hello, how you doing? I don't like that. Get out of here with that crazy stuff. It's bad enough the first thing I do every morning when I wake up is 
make sure that I'm like cast it far, far away from me. And then it's gonna come and invade my life. I don't think so. All right, so this little fish has gone to market, and I think we're about done with this little fish. I'm gonna get ready to paint you guys because I can't take it no more. As everybody does, one day, one day, I can't say when, one day. You got to see my glasses today though. <laughs> At least the top of my glasses. So I'm going to leave this like this, and I'm going to get to the painting, and if anything, I'll probably make some little friends later. I'll make them some more little friends later. But right now, I'm going to leave these little fishes like this, and I'm going to wrap this little piece up. Wait, I got one leg to make. I'm going to make that leg now. I think that should be enough. I'm gonna wrap this up so that I can add any other little surprise details to it that you probably you guys will probably see later on. <laughs> well, that's nice. My mama told me I was gonna be famous one day. <laughs> she just didn't say when. Not all the pieces most of the pieces <laughs> but the background is going to be mixed media uh, you know obviously it's going to be mixed media background i'm debating between shadow box which i don't think i want to do and a handmade canvas which i'm more or less needing to i have a 12 by 12 um book cover that I, I can use to make a nice canvas piece so i'm leaning towards that but it is going to be very 3D, so I have no idea right now, like, what I'm going to do. So, I don't know. I don't know, Brandy. Part of me wants to do it one way, then the other part fights with me and tells me to do it another. So, I'm literally having a tug of war with myself. So I'm going to attempt this again and put this little leg in here. And hopefully I won't touch it again for a while. So I'm going to leave these pieces be. going to leave these pieces be, you guys. I made one fish. One half an octopus we have one anchor and two crabs and we have one fish so you guys I have found Nemo and now it's time to rescue Ariel hello how you doing Bye, crafty girl. No, I will not touch. So, let me get rid of this broken little leg and just kind of give you a little up close. So, we have our anchor that took me three years and five nights to make. We have our two little restless crabs that just won't stay still. We have the makings of some kind of an octopus that hopefully will work out beautifully when I put it all together. And then we have this little fish that I just made that I'll probably be making a couple more of as time goes on. So I'm going to put this to the side and I'm going to pull her out. 
Now she needs a name, you guys. What name are we gonna give her? We have to refer to her as something. Thank you, Ruth. She needs a name. Something spicy but innocent. What do you guys think? Yay! I'm so happy, Brandy. <laughs> that was not easy. Oh my, that was not easy. You would think it looks a lot easier than it is to actually put it together. So let me open up my cardboard. And slide this in there and I have some glaze mediums that I want to add to this to help with the longevity of it number one number two to make it really slick and slimy and shiny kind of like how a fish is so let's see any suggestions on colors <coughs> going once going twice Okay, Liz. Ha ha. Jokey jokey. Don't you know that the best things in the world are kept secret? We gotta do what we gotta do, girl. We gotta do what we gotta do. So, I definitely want to create some kind of a skirt here. That's one thing. But before I go into skirt making skills, I definitely, definitely got to paint her. So, um, let me find some glossy paint. Any kind of glossy thing that I have. So, some pearlized paint. We're definitely going to need some pearlized paint. So, let me get some of that. This is a glazing medium that I'm going to be using on here somewhere, hopefully. That's the goal. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Now to just find the pearl, the pearl paint. Let me see if it's in here. Um... I should have it somewhere around here. That's not it. That's white. What's this? What's this? More glitter. What's this? Pearlizing medium. What? What? We found it. It. No, I'm not putting clothes on her, Brandy, but I am going to put, you know how the, they have like that little thing around their waist? I'm put, I have to put something around her waist. I don't know. Candy. <laughs> Candy the mermaid. So let's see. I'm gonna leave that for last. We got some pearlizing mediums. I'm gonna get some little trays thing, some little trays here, so we can get some paint going. Um, obviously, she's gonna be, she's gonna need some metallics, right? Because Carmen don't do nothing without some metallics in it. So I'm gonna pull out some different kinds of greens, some golds, some silvers. She's gonna have all different kinds of colors in here. Her hair. Brandy suggested white. Um, I wanted to do her hair like a red, like a red and copper, like a metallic red and copper. But I don't know if that's a bit much. It might be. <laughs> yes, yeah, like a like a jewel type of belt. Exactly. So I need to add something there. So I was thinking to get maybe like a little bit of um, tool. And maybe add some glitter to that tool and just kind of put like this little ruffled kind of like distressed kinds of um, little skirt thing on my bob you know like just in this section here before I glue them together so that she has like this little thing that's kind of waving in the water so yes so I'm just gonna pull out some paints and 
So I got mo I got moss pearl. I got dark patina. I got white pearl. You know we need some gold in there. So we got splendid gold. I also have the pearlizing medium, which is gonna soften up and add some other colors to it. Um, cause you know how that pearl is, it picks up all these different shades. Thank you, Brandy. I love her hair too. And I actually made like little rivets in it to make it look like she's got braids too. So she's like all over the world. <laughs> she's all over the place. And then the tail, I don't know. The tail, I'm thinking about going a little bit pinkish with it. I'm thinking salmon for some reason. So I want to go like pinkish and marbleized and just have like pink and a little bit of gold and a little bit of marble going on in her tail. And you know, in, in this part of it. And then this, some greens and some golds and some silver. And I don't know, we'll take it from there, I guess. But that's where my mind goes so far. Her hair should be like red with touches the bronze. Yes, that's what I'm thinking, Liz. Like red and then use some of the bronze because I have... Um... Okay, don't start falling all over the place. I have this color, it's like royal ruby, but it really looks like a like a reddish copper tone. And then I also have the copper tone itself. That's rich espresso, that's brown. That's not it either. It's somewhere in here. All these little shiny little bottle caps is kind of hard to uh I'm literally pulling all of these out. <laughs> uh where is it? Is it this one? I think I found it. Yes, I found it. So I have these two shades right here. This is, like I said, it's a little bit more on the reddish side. It's called Royal Ruby. And then this is their, uh, their regular copper tone. So I'm thinking the Royal Ruby, maybe with some red undertones. And I could get like a burgundy-ish kind of color to just kind of match the, the Royal Ruby and just make it look a little bit more 3D. Her tail should stay green. The sparkle finish you have. Yes. That's what I'm planning on doing. Leaving this leaving this tail part with these colors here. The um, Splendid Gold, the Moss Pearl, and the Dark Patina. And I also have a little bit of the White Pearl. And then I'm going to add some pearlizing, you know, in just areas. Just to see how it looks. Because um, I could always touch it back up with some of the metallics if I don't like it. Um, and then for the tail, I'm thinking pinkish with some gold. Um, and I don't know, for some reason I'm thinking salmon. So maybe like some pinkish kind of goldish kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Michelle, ooh, I like that. One of my favorite babies is named Michelle and she ain't my baby. But one of my favorite babies to play with and, and babysit, her name is Michelle. <laughs> She's like, what? Okay, so let's see. Let me get some brushes. Let me get myself together. Let me get myself together. So, I'm going to pour out some of these colors here. And I'm going to leave the hair for last because I think it's going to be the hardest to kind of pull off. And as far as her skin, I'm thinking I'm going to leave the clay the color that it is because it looks kind of tone as it is what I will do to it I will add some pearlizing medium to the skin just to make her pearlescent but I think I'm gonna leave her skin tone as it is because I kind of like it so I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the splendid gold on one spot some of this moss pearl which is very light Some of this dark patina, which is like a darker shade of the moss pearl. And some white, which I'm going to put all the way on the other side. I don't know what I'm doing with that yet. And let me just get some different brushes here. So, let's see. Let's see, let's see. No take backsies. No take backsies, you guys. Once we start this process, we are in it to win it, right? 
I like the name Michelle. She is Michelle the Mermaid. Since this is the darkest green that I have, I'm going to use this on all the inside of her uh, tail just to give the impression of some type of shadowing going on here. So I'm going to do that. And then I'll bring these colors into each other as I go. And I hope you guys can see that well. Unfortunately, this app doesn't have a zoom. Um, so I cannot zoom into exactly what I'm doing. But I will try to show you guys uh, as I go what exactly it is that I'm doing here. The madness... All the madness. There's so much crazy stuff going on. I'm going to add some of this over here. And being very kind of fancy free with it. Not really, um, you know, worried about straight lines or anything like that. Because I'm going to be adding some gold and just, I'm going back and forth. Or just different patterns and stuff until I feel like I got the right one. So basically, I'm going to be just splashing stuff all over the place for a little while. Hmm. It gets so quiet over here, especially when I'm doing these kinds of things. I can literally help myself think, and I can probably hear what you guys are thinking too. <laughs> it's how quiet it gets. I feel like her tail might need some kind of other color in it, so I don't know. Right now, I'm kind of debating like, what else do I want to add on this tail? Should I add glitter? No, right? Because I'm going to add the pearlizing. Forget about the glitter. The glitter we'll use for probably her hair or other parts of her. I'm going to set this up and let this dry a little bit. Then come back to it and add more texture. Because right now it's just going to get lost. Um, you know, in the green and stuff like that. So I'm just going to... Let this kind of go off to the side. And then I'll come back and look at her and figure it out. So off you go. So this side is the side that I was saying that I kind of wanted some of that pink. So I got a little bit of berry. Um, this is called berry. Berry by. They got like three different names for one for one color. So I guess it's three different languages. But I'm just going to mix a little bit of this berry color here. And it's very light. Let me just clean up my brush some. And that's the good thing with painting. If you don't like something, once you do it. Awesome. As long as you guys can see it, then I'm happy. Because me sitting and watching it on a 2D, even if it's even though it's 3D, is a little bit hard. So I can't always see like um, the way that it's turning out to the fullest like I would like to. But I'm glad that it's um it's showing. I need a drop of white in here. I 
need just a drop of white. And this is regular acrylic paint that I'm mixing in with this metallic paint. Just to soften it up a little bit because it's a little bright. They didn't give me a pink, so I'm trying to make do. <laughs> uh, anything with berry looks great. Oh, yes, Liz. <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. Um, so let's see here. So I'm not going to push too much into it. I'm just going to allow it to catch whatever it kind of wants to catch. Because I'm going to go into it with other colors as well. But I just wanted to have at least some kind of other colors going on. I almost feel like I should make her hair the same color of her tail. And now I'm just kind of adding some of the plain, um, just pearlizing medium on it, just to kind of blend it out a little bit. And just seeing what kind of happens here. And I will be adding some gold to this tail as well. Just to make the whole tail match. Like, you know, bring it all together. Thank you, loveless. Thank you, thank you. And it's crazy because when I first made this clay, my only intention was to make some charms. I was like, why buy them when I can make them? How hard can they be? Let me just make some charms. And from there it turned into, if I can make a charm, I can make something bigger. And from there, this is what we have. And I am going to paint on the underside. Only because she's very dimensional, her tail, you know, her tail kind of flips on every direction. So I just want to make sure that, um, what doesn't matter which side you're kind of looking at it in, you're still able to kind of, um, see it. So I am going to cover up most of the bottom as well. Not all of it, just most of the ones, most of the parts that I know for a fact you'll be able to see. And this is already drying, which is awesome. Like little bits like this, I'll paint because I know that that's going to be a part that's kind of overlapping and stuff. So let's see here. Let's flip her upside down a little bit just so we can catch some of these areas and a little bit darker tone. Because they're supposed to somewhat be in some kind of a shadow, right? So let's just, just gonna paint these edges. And that's all I'm really worried about right now is just these um, main edges here. And again, just paralyzing it all so that it all matches. gonna look so cute I don't even know if I'm gonna give it away you guys <laughs> every time I do something that is just like what is it really you gotta be kidding not that I would want to give away ugly stuff but look at that oh my god it's like candy it looks like laffy taffy when you stretch it out a whole bunch of times I love it I amaze myself sometimes it's crazy the things that, that actually end up evolving right in front of your face. And that's why I'm, I'm, you know, I always be like, F it. I'm just going to do it. Like, I don't even care. Like, if it comes out good, it comes out good. If it doesn't come out good, it doesn't come out good. Because I surprise the heck out of myself on the regular, you guys. You have no idea. I surprise myself on the regular. More often than not... I am in awe of what comes out when I just keep moving forward. Otherwise, forget about it. I would have been quit a long time ago. You know how many things I just did that I just kind of chucked away and I was like, ah. 
because I didn't like how it didn't look at the beginning so I just kind of lost all hope and inspiration kind of like what happened with the other live stream that I did that Wednesday when I was trying to make that that flower card that just didn't work for me I was so disappointed that I literally just chucked the whole video after I was done I was like I, I can't even look at it so I'm just gonna get rid of it and I took it off the feed I got rid of it so most often than not I do fail at what I am trying to do because you know it's a process and I like to keep going and I like to not give up because you never know you really never know but I am loving how this is looking right now I am loving it from every angle So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a very thin brush, like a liner brush, and I'm going to draw in some of the, um, I'm going to add some of the dark patina and some of the gold little streaks into it, just so that it looks like it's one connected piece, um, and not just some random, you know, foolishness. So let me just find my liner brush. I know I have one in here somewhere. Just give me one second. As much as I try to separate my brushes and put them, you know, the big ones with the big ones, the small ones with the small ones, I always end up putting them all right back together again. I have one more liner brush that I would like to pull out. So Oh, and she's stiff as a board. Hey, Nevis. Thank you. Happy hump day. <laughs> Thank you, Nevis. <laughs> All right, so I gotta remember to wash my brushes before I put them in the bucket, and now wash them after they've been in the bucket. So. Um, let me get some water and I'm just going to spray my little container here, my little lid from some Chinese food and I am going to grab some of this, patina, the dark patina color and I just want to kind of go along some of these lines and I have to wet the brush a little bit every now and then just to keep that tip kind of straight And all this will do is just help me give uh, her tail just a little bit more depth. Give all those little, you know, sections just a little bit more depth, if you will. 
cast a little bit more shadowing. At least that's the goal. And I'm just kind of doing this very lightly. Don't have to be too much detail. I'm not worried so much about the detail itself. Because it's going to look good either way. And now just doing the same with the gold and just adding some gold in there. And then I'm going to go in with the darker um, with the darker shade of the berry and just add some more, you know, depth into it. And by doing this, I'm also dragging in some of that green. But at the same time, blending out some of that gold. And I'll show you guys what it looks like in one second. And it's light enough that the pink is still very strong. I need some of that gold right on the tip of these um right on the tip of the tail certain little spots here to give Michelle some gold attributes because she's not no common mermaid you guys she is under the water royalty under the sea royalty all right so let's see here So I have some of that all kind of blended in there, and I added some. I added gold loops of her. Um, is this a fin? What is this called? This piece of the tail. Does anybody know? Cause I don't know what to call it anymore. But we have this and we have that, and then, um, like I said, I was going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um. Just add some pearl eyes, um, some of this, some of this pearl, um, pearlizing medium to her body, and then I'm gonna go into painting her hair. So I'm gonna keep her body more or less the same kind of tone that it already is. I'm not gonna get too crazy uh, with coloring her skin tone or trying to give her a skin tone. I kind of like uh, the way that it is already. So I'm just going to pearlize it. And I keep thinking of salmon as I'm doing this. Because you know how salmon has that pearlized kind of, uh, you know, all the scales are kind of pearlized. It's fin, right? Yeah, that's what I thought too. But I kept thinking for some reason I was saying it wrong and I didn't want to sound like a ding dong. So I just kept taking it back and calling it tail. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going into it, all the little nooks and crannies. I'm not really worried about it if I get it in her hair because I'm going to be painting her hair uh, in all different kinds of colors. Right now I'm just trying to get it on her skin and I'm just kind of, you know, painting, getting it in as, in as many little nooks and crannies as I can. And then kind of rubbing that out. Why are you acting up, little brush? Don't you know I loved you?
just trying to make sure that this kind of paints on nice and smooth um, you know not too much streaking going on so have we agreed on a color for her hair do we know what we want to do do we want to make it the colors of her fin or do we want to go with that ruby metallic color that we had talked about earlier with the red and the ruby will that all match Let me lay out some of this ruby color so that we can see what we got going on over here. And this is the copper. And this is royal ruby. Which, like I said before, is very similar so the actual copper itself is just a little darker. Maybe it got a little bit more red in it. Um, excuse me. Hello. Okay, baby. Be careful, okay? Love you. Bye. Um, sorry for the interruption, but when my daughter calls, I answer. Um, so let's see. So, I want like burgundy. Let me look for a really dark red. Let me see what I have here. This is dark scarlet. So, let's see. Let me shake this a little bit better. Yeah, I'm thinking that I'm going to add some tones of that as well in there. Um... So, she's going to have very kind of, I want to say kind of funky, kind of funky, funky kind of hair. But, let's see here. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. Because this color, this pink is very bright. So if I wanted to add that like on top of it, on certain parts, like I, I think I can probably get away with that. So now just to add uh, some of this paint in there. In a way that I'm not painting on her back. And right here, this is the mixture of all three colors together. which I kind of like at the moment. I like the way that red color kind of looks. So let's see. And I'm just getting into all the little nooks and crannies just to create the depth in there, you know, give it that shadow too um, from the layers that are poking out from the bottom. And this, I'll never finish with this, with this little uh, thing of bob over here. Let me get another. I gotta get some new. Uh, Look at the conditions of my brushes. They look like crap. <laughs> they still paint, but they look like sh shiz balls. So, let's see. You guys should see all the little faces that I'm making right now as I'm painting this. Like, I literally feel my face getting stiff every time I'm about to go near her skin. I'm going to have to use my little uh, fine liner to get into those little areas there.
What do you guys think about the color? Because her hair was layered in one strand at a time, I have a lot of little nooks and just areas that I have to get into, which do not make life easy. because I have I, I I some of the You know, I'm going to have all on. 